Welcome to the podcast. Do you think I have a chance of being in the Smashing Pumpkins? No. Well, you have a chance. Yes. I've seen an unpopular guitar opinions, like people literally writing, like, does anybody in my circle know anybody in the Smashing Pumpkins? Well, his management? wife told us that everybody's saying our videos. 6,000 submissions. And she's like, people like in the bedrooms. Yeah, no lighting, no nothing. It was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, yeah, you, we do have lighting, and also, yeah, you didn't you didn't submit one. You asked Billy about it. Yeah, yeah, he he alluded to the fact that it's but not, no, that it's not gonna happen. Yeah, I didn't think it's gonna happen. I just told you you have to do it. I and tried. Yeah, yeah, I tried. It's uh, you have to try. It, we are doing stuff with Billy. What we said. Yeah, Conway we are said. doing stuff with Billy. Yeah, I'm Which, happy that he wants to include saxophone with it. Like, I know I would have done it anyway, but it seems like in his brain, saxophone is a part of it. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know what, like, talking to his wife about what their lives are in the summer, because she's like, she's like, yeah, Billy tours in the summer. I'm like, why the summer? He's like, well, the stadiums have sporting events in the middle yeah. of the year. I'm just like... That's a weird consideration. It's like this is very far from my, from my sphere, you know? I'm just curious to see, because, you know, she told me that she travels with him with the kids. That's why we're homeschooled. No, she, she, it's what true, she but me. she doesn't travel with him because she said it sucks to be on tour with these things because it's like she can't go to the cities because the stadiums are usually far from the cities and they're on buses all day. Oh, okay. And everything's like preparing all day, so they have like a house on the Mediterranean in Spain that she goes to for two months and then they see him in between. Oh, like they go they travel to... travel back and forth, and sometimes the kids go with him and a nanny. Oh. And she, she but she doesn't. That's not what she told me. Okay, yeah. that makes more sense, honestly. Yeah. It's, it's a whole other... It's a whole it's other... It's a different life. It's a different life. It's not... Uh, even in rock, I feel like we're talking about, like, the very upper echelons. You know, it's yeah. not... Like, in fusion, this is so... There's no... It makes more sense. What do you mean, what makes more sense? Not to two with him. Because it's like, it doesn't matter how you break down two, how big you are, you have to travel. Right. And that just doesn't make a lot of sense with kids. No, no, there's a lot of time on the bus, planes. Yeah. It's, it's mostly, but I like mean. Like once the kids are older, yes, but this age. Yeah, I just have no idea what playing shows that size is on any level. But yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like the actual thing of like being on stage, I just went ice skating. Do you just start in, dancing? Uh, I just went ice skating in <laughs> Wrigley Field. Uh -huh. And to think that the plane there was and it it's pretty packed, big? It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, I would imagine that the moment you bust out your instrument, you just start behaving very differently on stage. Do you think so? I think like, you feel like you need to occupy more space. Yeah, I don't like know. Like you somehow make yourself bigger. <laughs> I can imagine myself just starting. To walk around. I walk around. I walk around when I don't have a mic. I know. They're probably gonna, yeah. It's very hard for me to condemn myself to stage even yesterday. Yeah. I just twirl around like a monk or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Thank um, you. <laughs> it's, it's great well, moves. Not patient for a compliment. No, thank no, you. I, I love how you do that. Thank it's you. Nice. It's nice how you start facing like me instead of the audience, and then Sometimes you just turn do. back. What? Well, I don't really face you. You, know, you just kind of walk in circles. Sometimes I do. I face Nick sometimes. Yeah. Because Nick's like what I do. Yeah. Nick, so, playing with Nick is very, it's very difficult in the sense that he always snickers, like, and you don't know if he laughs at the lick you just played or is having a good time. He's hard to read. My real problem with Nick is that he laughs at my jokes and then it makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can't play. <laughs> You're used to being ignored? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Anyway, how, how do you like being famous again? On Facebook? How do you like it? It's pretty fun. I fucking it's pretty fun. love it. We also like, finished paying for a van, so it came at the same time, which is somehow connected. I feel so optimistic ever since Facebook came back. We just got to not be Nazis somehow. Well, it will be difficult. It will be difficult. Yeah. It's for hard. some of the novels, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Do you think I'm the problem? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. But you, you got to spend. Well, you posted it. But I mean, yeah, the problem is that if it passes my 
if it passes my judgment, which a lot of things pass in my judgment, it will definitely pass your judgment. That's one of the issues. Like the Amy Winehouse stuff, uh -huh. for example, like the joke is, like I think the difference between some, well now we do a lot of reposting, which we didn't back then, back then it's like every meme was original. Yeah. It's like, we, we play original music, we have to have original <laughs> memes now. It's like, yeah, we can I do that. once every couple of days I do an original one, but. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and a lot of stuff I see just three posts of memes that I did like a thousand years ago in other groups. But it's, uh, like the Amy Winehouse ha one, the joke wasn't, ha ha ha, look what happened to her, she's a drag, she was a drag, she was I know, a, she they, took a it, person. they took it to a strange place. The joke was, so do I need to explain the meme to people? Yeah. So it's her looking healthy and normal, mm -hmm. and that says first day of two, and then it says fourth day of two, and, and it's her a being a junkie. Yeah. But the underpinning joke of it is that it, she actually, that's what happened to her. She became, like, the music career, and she became a junkie and died. Yeah. So you could say, like, hey, look what the machine does to you, the Hollywood music machine, whatever it is, does to you. Right. And that would be serious. But I put it in a joking way. But it's not, that the joke is not about her being a junkie. And junkies dying from junk. It's, people... about, it's about what happened to you in, on tour. Yes. But people did not. Understand <laughs> people the joke. did not take it this way at all. We did have the most amount of women comment on our page in history. We did. In defense of Amy Winehouse. Which they, they really see themselves in her. Because I love my they're... comment on it, because one guy was like, well, you, will, you don't have half her talent, or like a fraction, a fraction of her talent, and you will never be as famous and successful, and your music will never touch as many people. And I was like, yeah, you know what, from now on, we're just going to make fun of people less successful than us. Yeah. You're right. That's, that's, that, that's good etiquette. Right, punch down. Yeah, to punch down. Everybody knows you have to punch down. When you... that, that's... That, so, that goes well on the internet. Like it's literally everything you would do. Somebody would say something stupid about it. Yep. Yeah, so. No, yeah. I do not care. But yeah, it, it's, it's so weird. Like, learning how to live without the, the endorphins. The of Facebook? Facebook endorphins for a year. I really felt like in a way that I was over it. Like, I was just like, I don't need this in my life. And the moment it came back, I'm like, just like, my life is so much better. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing like how, it's amazing, like I see it, you know, talking about like Billy Corgan, it's just not to compare our fame to his fame, because <laughs> yeah, it's <himself>. like, <laughs> you know, it's insane. Like he's, a, he's really a household name. But once you have fame of any sort, it's a matter of how you channel that energy into whatever, sales, whatever you're trying to do, right? It's like, you know, sell tickets to a show, sell courses online, sell vinyl, do, do some sort of like brand deals, all that shit. But it's like, but the fame in itself is not something that you keep, can keep regenerating from zero. You know what I mean? Like there is something that happens at some point that gets you in the door, sort of grandfathered yeah. into some sort of machine. And, you know, now, like, we're building it now with, like, YouTube and Patreon and stuff, but we've just built it with Facebook. But yeah, it's we always did it. Yeah. It's just, like, wh whatever we do, like, some of the stuff is not, like, the reach now is just crazy. It's in the millions. Yeah. It's in the millions. It's just amazing, you know, to have that again. It's, uh... I don't know. Makes you feel like it's not even makes you feel like people are listening. People are listening, yeah. but it but it it did sober me up a little bit about what what uh, portion of that people of those people are our actual musical audience, and it's uh, and and what what uh, sect of those people are our diehards, and it's actually very few. Like a lot of them will engage, with, will listen to stuff we put up. Will engage with it, but it's not. Uh, it's oh, definitely not our core I, audience. I don't know if I. Well, yeah, because the core audience would go different places too. They just seek us out. They, yeah, they but, find us. Well, that's how we let everybody know about shows, and we have people at shows, so we know that's definitely they were there. But also, once we reached a certain size, and we started getting paid for doing Facebook stuff, 
when we didn't get like a lot of our stuff that got to the most amount of people wasn't music anymore so we got people on that yeah i had so a... it's just yeah i'm just saying it's at this point a lot of the people in, in facebook became something else and then a lot of people with other fans not necessarily like that part of facebook yeah. of, of what we do and i can see why somebody would not follow us on facebook and still like our music Sure. And I think we lost some people on Facebook because of it and gone gained them, but I don't think that it means that our fans, they stop being fans if they're really fans. No, I mean, for sure. I, I had a student that was asking me, you know, I think since he saw the Facebook come back, that I give him a lesson. I still, we still haven't done any to schedule it, but like he said, like just about music business and starting a band and just kind of like getting to where we got, uh, wherever that is. And uh, I was thinking, I was thinking about it. Like, man, if you had to start a band today, what would you even do? The same thing? Mm, I don't know, because it's like you push. If you were, like Stalin said, you push where his mush, and it's the same thing we do. Did. But I'm saying, like, if let's say now you are 21, you you have a band, you're you know you have some recordings. Nobody knows you. We're playing Monopoly. You're in a city. Is it still Nibble? That's Nick. Oh, that's Nick. He's changing pickups <laughs> on the Barlow. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> Monopoly okay. is a good guess, though. Uh, <laughs> but you, like you're 21. What do you do? What, um, would you, what would you actually do right now? OK, so there's I. I always wanted to play saxophone. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's put it there. I wanted to play saxophone, not at home. I wanted to play sax to play saxophone for people. So that was the baseline, really. Um, the reason why we did what we did was to go is because we played John Brown. Like I got. Should I talk about it more? Do they know the people? So we had Indian, uh, not Indian move. We had Indie the Indie Bible. Bible. Yeah, it, was um, a, it was a book which was like a list of venues in the States, right? Yeah, it's one of those businesses that they did great for a couple of years. Before, before and then it Google died. killed them. Yes. Yeah, before and India on the Move killed them. Yeah. And later. things like you know, India on the Move, I was talking to India on the Move about doing another business because I can make the website much better and actually make money. But they, they, didn't, they wanted to. We talked about it and we were like, no, but what if we come up with an idea? And yeah. It's like, yeah, but you're not going to because you haven't. It's been too many years. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm digressing. Uh, you know what? Before I digress, if somebody wants to help us, let's. <laughs> if somebody knows anything about websites, let's make some money. Oh. We have, we have two great ideas. Okay. All right. But forget about that. Yes. Um, so I got us. I looked everywhere in Illinois. We, we lived in Chicago at this time. Uh, we played shows at home. And then we had some, uh, we had some weeklies and monthlies. We had a bi-weekly in the red line. We had a monthly at, at uh, Underground. Was it? No. Underground had, Wonder Bar. No, that was a monthly. That was a weekly. Yeah. Right? Weekly or bi-weekly? Bi-weekly, I think. We had a bi in, in Underground Wonder Bar that's closed. We had one at uh, The Tonic that's closed. Right. We had one at Lily's that's closed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, we Lily's had like open. tons of shows. Yeah, but we had like, we had some monthlies and, um, and weeklies and stuff, and then you have to. I feel like you really do have to play on the local scene enough to understand that you can't. Like you can't skip that. I don't feel like that's that's a skippable stage. I, I don't think you should either. So it's like you just need to be out there and play a little bit and learn your songs and learn your stuff and see what it feels like being on and, stage and, get, and and cycle through a few formations of the local musicians to where you get the people that you actually like to play with, or that are good enough and in a similar life situation. Yeah, but there's no money in it. I think that's the thing that people don't understand, they price themselves out. Yeah, I think also a huge mistake that I'm seeing is people tying themselves to people who are in a different stage in life. Like, yeah. you, you don't need the bassist who's married when you're 21. When you're 21. Uh, that's a little bit better than the bassist who wants to go on the road. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, if you are, like, just you got to be smart with looking around you and, and like, you know, be abs. If you're absolutely free, you need to be with people who are absolutely free, or because the the tensions will 
eat at your thing, even if the people are pretending like they have it under control, right? It's like it, you can't. You can't have that stuff under control. Uh, yeah, I do not know though, what it's like in a lot of cities. I a lot of stuff I'm saying might not be as relevant right now. I think it is, but I I think that in a lot of cities, especially the bigger cities, you have some people that have some sort of financial. Power. So if it was here, for example, when we were coming up in Chicago, there was a guy named called Mil Tessel, mm -hmm. and he had some pool with who was playing the bigger jazz events in town. Yeah. Okay? But he didn't like fusion. So it wasn't like climbing in the scene that has to do with him made no sense. Yeah. Okay? But he had the power, but that I think once some people don't understand it, that he had the power, but kissing up to him, which is what we tried to do, uh, we, we tried to contact him directly, and then he came to our show, and he's like, you guys are great, but I'm not really into fusion. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I remember it very clearly, because he said, fusion was already done. And I was like, yeah, but you're doing jazz, that's already been done too, yeah, even before that. Done. Sure. Yeah, like, yeah, that's been done in the 50s and 60s, our stuff was but done in the 90s, some of it, like, our yeah, type 70s of fusion. Yeah, 70s through the 90s. 70s yeah. of the 90s, our type of yeah. fusion. Um, you know, and we do, I think, something very original, but it doesn't even matter. It's like fusion is a yeah. sound. Booking Jazz Festival has <laughs> also been done. Well, yeah. Well, specifically <laughs> guitar driven, I remember listening to Marcus Miller, like what he said, how much he hates guitar driven fusion. Yeah. And, and it's true, because I remember I booked us, I used to book us a show that um, now it's Vegetable Buddies, which I really like playing sure. there, and I like the guy, the owner is great, he loves us. He's one of the owners who just get trashed when we play. Yeah, And when he gives me too much money, it's like, oh, you guys! <laughs> yeah, you guys keep coming back. Yeah. Like, uh, but we, it used to be a jazz club there before. Yeah. Do you remember the name of jazz Trios. club? Trios. Trios, yeah. And um, I had to really convince him to let us play there. Like, yeah. I really, like, put the pressure on him to let us play there, because it's just electric guitar. Yeah. The way it looks and... The energy level, it makes it... People feel like it will dry all the vaginas in the building. Well, correct. It's yes. also not just the... It's just there is something vis visual to it. Like when you come with your, your big amp... Yeah. And, well, I mean, if it's a dating and spot, distortion. you know, it's, it's really a bad night to take your girl out. Yeah, but either way, it's just... Well, it's a bad night to take your girl out to a lot of the jazz they have, too. Sure. But it's just the visuals of like a, a, a half stack. Yes. And, and this amp, and you standing and playing, not sitting down with, uh, you know, and then having an electric bass, it's just something about it. It's just, yeah. it's not jazz right. for them. Yeah. And they're correct. It's like, upper, it's like you see it with bassists that think that they can come to a jazz, jazz gig with, uh, with, with an, an acoustic bass, bass uh, or electric bass, or even acoustic bass that's not an upright. Right. And it's like, no, it's, it's not jazz. You guys yeah. don't get it. It's like, yeah. that's not what people are paying yeah, for. Yeah, they want steak, wine, and your fucking upright. We do, the though. Yeah, that's, cause, uh, yeah, because I think especially the women you take on a date have a, an idea in their head of what the evening is, and it needs to be Instagrammable. Everybody it's, does. Yeah. It just, it's not jazz. Yeah. You know, it's a jazz combo, maybe, but it's not jazz. Sure. Yeah, so. the lady's not happy if you're playing Stella. Yeah. They, they don't know the songs, right? It's, it's just about what it looks like and sounds like... It is too. a show. Yeah. It is it's a show. A, I'm, yeah, not, I'm, not even, I'm not even trashing it. I'm saying yeah. it makes sense. Sure. Um, where are we? Yes, yeah, so we have some people that have some power. And I'm guessing it's like with another uh, scene, too, like the jam scene and... The metal scene, you know, those things we really don't know anything about. But they have some financial power. Now, the way to get to those people is not directly. Everybody kisses their ass all the time. Right. Like, you're not going to kiss their ass better. It needs to be their idea to bring you. They need you, to You have like to climb through idea. the scene. So they have these people that they like. And when we, in, when we were coming up, it was um, Greg Ward. Matt Ullery. And Matt Ullery and those guys. Yep. And... If you play around those guys and get them to your gigs and they like you and maybe they get you to... Those people don't not going to take you to their gigs because you play well. But if they need a sub, they will take you right. if they like you. And you need to start taking them and start playing together. And then that's how you kind of tap to the power in the scene. So that's one way to do it. I don't think it's a great way. I think maybe in New York it still works or LA. You know, maybe you can get a good gig out of it. Um, but you gotta be, you, you gotta be that guy too. I mean, that's, that's the one thing like, you know, with my students that I, I keep telling them just to, to wake them up. It's like, do you, are you, are you in a lot of bands, right? Do you, are you good at befriending people? 
playing gigs with them, meeting their friends, playing gigs with them. Because it's like the people I know that do that, some of them, some of my, like, I can- th Ian did it. Ian did, did it, but like, you know, some of my friends who are the most socially awkward are great at it, you know, that, that have always played with a ton of people. It's because you don't actually need to form friendships. You need to form these like business acquaintance kind of thing where you're like pleasant enough to be around and you show up on time. It's, it's, it's the stuff they tell you in music school. It's, it's actually true. Like it's just this appearance of professionalism mixed with, um, it's weird because it's like a lot of people I see like that get gigs in Chicago, they don't play the right notes. Their solos don't sound very good, but there are things that they don't do, right? It's like they typically don't mess up forms. Yes, that's a big deal. You know what I mean? It's like you can play the weirdest, most horrifically boring, nothing-esque solos, but if you get lost, people will really judge you. Yeah, even if you jump back in. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, you see like this level of player now that like plays horrible solos, keeps getting hired, but they just know where they are, you know? You know, uh, I, I, I think, I think for talent, and I think some people do it, um, I think some people do it more naturally than other people, but I do think that once you know what you want in life, it's much easier to get it, and initial talent is not a big deal. The example I always give when I tell people is that when we had a guy, a friend, that came to us to sell CDs mm -hmm. and in 2009, yes. And we were floored by how good he was at selling. And then he came on the road with us in 2015, yeah. and we were floored by how horrible he was. And how good we got. And, yeah. Uh, it's just, if you know what you want, it's you're already above 99% of people. So that's why he's telling me in music school, they're like, okay, what do you want to be? And like, musicians, yeah, but what does it mean? You want to be, because if you want to play in wedding bands, okay, I want to play in wedding bands and make some money. It's like, okay, I know what I need to do. I know I need to get a good suit. I know I need to, <laughs> to, to learn the songs. I need to know I have the, the gear that's appropriate. I know who I need to talk to, right? Yeah. If you just want to be a general person, get what you get, it's like, yeah, you, you're completely directionless and aimless. Yeah, and I think that's, that's the, real, the real reality of, uh, like, the typical jazz student doesn't have a vision of themselves, not even of their career, but of themselves. Like, if they look at the person they go see, let's say it's Kurt Rosenwinkel, I think for most of the players, especially the insecure, typical player in music school, they don't have, like, the, even, they're not advanced enough to have the jealousy it takes to want the gig. Right? They don't want, they don't see themselves on that stage instead of Kurt playing with that band. Yeah. Uh, that, that would be way over, even the thought of it probably would be overwhelming to them. It's like, how would I survive these changes, these temples, these things? They don't have the skill set together to even imagine it. And even when they get closer, they feel inadequate. So they feel like they, you know, they're not deserving of that kind of thing. But it's not even deserving. I think, I think um, in our generation, there was much more fantasizing about yourself on a stage than in the current one. I feel like the, and, and it's because of the people, the kind of people we saw, like live or in videos, you know, that seemed like the setting for music, but now the setting for music seems like home with a camera. You know how they have a thing they, about ownership, that ownership is... The highest level? No, no, like, um, like if you have something, it's like you own it. If, if you have something for long enough, you own it, even, though, even if you don't really own it. Mm -hmm. They have some sort of law like that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? And it's kind of like that with music, too. That's what I was... It's weird, because we didn't do it, and we didn't do it for, for a good reason. It doesn't work, and I'll, I'll get to what we do, I guess, soon. But if you want to be in a scene, like in a jazz in New York, okay? Hire the people that play the gigs you want to play. Because if you yeah. play with... Look, look at Osnoy, that's a great example. 
he likes fusion. So he hires Dennis Chambers and he hires all those people that play fusion. And eventually when they need somebody, a lot of times they don't have money to pay, let's say, Scott Henderson and Alan Holtzworth, or Scott Henderson and Alan Holtzworth don't want to do the gig. Right. So we're going to call the person that already is playing with them all the time. Yeah, and it's easy because they know the same music so they can call tunes. Yes. Yes. So it's like you want to be in a scene, start getting the people in the scene gigs. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really that. Yeah. Like, and get that's them right. gigs, pay them on time, be nice, don't be a crazy character. That's yeah. a terrible idea. Yeah. Like, don't be, don't say crazy shit like don't. I do or Danny does. Right. Um, or don't talk gig. about politics or... Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't talk about any, just, you know, just, yeah. just, be, cool. just be a cool guy, a nice person yeah. that, you know, you don't think too much about, that people don't need to worry yeah. about getting you. That's, that's how I would do if I was the same. Now, our stuff is not like that. We didn't want to do that. And it wouldn't make sense to us. We want to play very specific music, which is our music. So, you know, it's different. Um, but that's about getting into, into a scene. I, I think also that most scenes, like I don't know, obviously metal and stuff, you still have a scene. Um, but in most, like in jazz, it's, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna reach the top and you're gonna discover that there's nothing there. Yeah. Um, especially because a lot of us things but that, well, don't I, translate. I guess the original question would be like, in, what do you think the path forward is now for a band of very young people who are motivated what do we that, and, and they want to do, they want to get, let's say, just some sort of social media success mixed with some sort of like touring opportunities. All right, what, what do we play? That's a big question. Let's say like whatever, fusion, jam, the kind of people that would listen to us. Uh, my, so... The way I look at it is that when we started, it was the death of dive bars, and that's what we played. We played dive bar and biker bars. I think it's they're dying. I think I think they won't give the opportunity. I think there's still some of them are still there, but they're not going to pay enough to make touring make sense. They're, they're not. They're not enough of them. Yeah. It's like you can't. You well, can't. I feel like there's, st there's there's still like you know watering holes for people, but they don't have music. They don't I have, mean, like that rock dive bars, I guess. Yeah, but like, like a the lot zone. Of, yeah, that's not a thing anymore. Like there used to be a ton of dive bars in Southern Illinois having music. They Enough were just, that sort, of play they were just sort of left s standing from the '90s. They were like somebody. Like I feel like the building was sold a few times, yes. but they didn't change anything about it yet. So it was still set up for music because kind of grandfathered in, you know, from like how bars used to be 15 years before we were there. Yeah, well, you know, even Harley, which is a big part of this, it's like Harley is not doing as great as we used to. Right. Like people are not into Harley in our age, even. Right. right. And younger people, definitely not. Yeah. So Dude, I did one of, when, when that, uh, I pissed off one of uh, the guys on our Facebook with a strike back. Like now, I, I'm actually not going to do strike backs anymore because people are, our Facebook is doing so well that like they get like 150 messages and they yeah. feel attacked and the guy's like I'll be waiting for you in one of the shows and he wrote I'll be the guy on the green Harley, Harley. I'll be like is that supposed to be threatening it just sounds like the village people are coming to my show it's just like it's also it's like good it's like are you gonna run me over what like I wouldn't be I would be worried he's gonna shoot you yeah I know it's the same the guy know. with the gun not the guy on the Harley it's like what's that dude? well you can't say that because then it's like police but sure I was like, are you, are you actually planning to... But to me, it's like, are you planning to shoot Danny? Because if not, we're going to kick your ass. It's like, yeah. what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, old guy? I'm like, me and Nick are going to jump you. I'm going to put you in a Boston Crab. It's like, dude, it's like, what are you talking about? It's like, also, it's like... Yeah. Yeah, you're going to kill Danny because of it? It's like, <laughs> let's chill out. But the funny thing is that I don't know him. I don't follow the strike backs. So you wrote us, I'm going to be in your show as well. I was like, buy tickets in advance. But <laughs> that's what I told him. Buy discount the tickets. <laughs> He's like, I'm not paint, I'm gonna be in the back on the Harley. It's like, I don't think you can bring your Harley to the show. <laughs> park it somewhere. Yeah, where park you can it see somewhere it. when you can go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so the dive bars are dying, so that's out. Then they had something better, which was breweries, which we kind of missed on. Yeah. But, like, we but did a bunch. it wasn't really for us. That they, were ne they were never set up for loud music, they were always. The, it was always breweries always felt like the vibe was not rock band. Yeah, it's jam band. 
either jam, there were jam band breweries, but mostly it was acoustic, singer song, like singer songwriters, duos, trios, really like. I don't think so, because I think it's too Audi. Too what? I think it's too Audi. I think we need drums, but not like less heavy when we walk. I think, I, I, I imagine like some sort of like um, indie rock covers. Yeah, it's maybe indie rock, yeah. You know? <laughs> no bassist. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's true, like, like no bassist band. Again, you've been to a brewery. It's not the kind of setting where most people sit down and like watch intently. It's a lot of motion. No, but you also can't have single song either because it's not loud enough. Yeah. It's a guy with a <laughs> loop a lot of times. Yes. Uh, so, okay, so then we have breweries. But the breweries finally understood after a lot of years in COVID were like, nobody wants to listen to live music. Yeah, why are we paying $500? Why are we paying $500? Yes. Yeah, so let's so just that's sell dead. beer and they're still I full. really think the only thing that you have for live music now that's booming is single songwriter, like if you can harmonize with your two best buddies and sing and play acoustic music. But I think, honestly, that's, I think that's the mo best thing you can do right now. Yeah. Play wineries. Smaller breweries and bluegrass, but that's just money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's just money. That's not that's not gonna lead to any sort of. Uh, yeah, I, I don't agree. I think that it does lead. I think that our touring was great. I think that us staying at home and playing would not have done it. No, no, for sure not. So, you know, I, I also think that once we started booking shows, did you see that we got offered? Shows all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. It's because it's like you play shows, people fucking know that you're around. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing, like, just, just being inactive just makes, like, everything is, is, is a machine that has momentum, and the moment the momentum is broken, everything stops working. It's There's also something about people, I, you know, I suspect that Corey Wong doesn't sell a lot of albums, and it's, well, it does now, sorry. He didn't. We used to look, I used to look at his band camp, and I know that not everybody shows up on your band camp, but we would kill him on band camp. We used to make like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a year on yeah. band camp right. before we stopped touring. And we stopped touring and it dried out. Right. And, and the reason is because when you play shows, you make connections with people. Like, yeah, you make connections, like, you know, talking to them and melt, but just seeing you live, it's a, such a different experience with music that I think, you know, that it's just, we would have never done it. No. Be able to do it, not playing live for yeah. people, especially with our kind of music. Um, so I think that playing live is crucial. But yeah, it's difficult. We don't have a lot of places to play live right now because you want to do it in a way that you can still make money. I would do it the minimum, you know, amount of people that you have to do it. From your estimation, like just looking at what, trying to book this tour, how, how much is gone from the live? Yeah, but I still figure it out very quickly. No, I know, but like, if if you had to guess, like in the U.S., how how much effect did COVID have on this industry insane. of clubs? Insane. Most of them are gone. Most of them are gone. But that's what I'm saying with uh, push. You know, we push for his mush. When I booked us the two that I didn't make it, couldn't make, which is it's like I was so bummed. I'm still bummed out about it because it's my favorite part of the state, and I booked us some killer. Oh, areas. You would have gotten, gotten to see John get crushed by bed bugs. I wouldn't, because I wouldn't have booked that hotel that's is bed bug ridden. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, don't yeah, worry. Probably. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was, you know, I couldn't find places, so I just, you know, I talked to music stores. I took to ever play until I found stuff, and I found the stuff in o Oregon. Yeah. It's like, and, and I found all the things, and it's like you can find it. If you put your, if, if you put your mind to it, you find it, and your, what does your student play? What kind of music? Just like jam band. Is it vocal, of, of the vocals? I think so, yeah. To, to me, if, okay, and I would have done it differently. I would have put a tiny bit more money into our sound system, which we did, because I had this tiny thing. I mm -hmm. guess it, we didn't have the technology back then. No. It was different. Yeah. I but mean, you, you, you could bring like a truck with stuff. Yeah, right? but you can't. Yeah. So I would invest, it, I would, first of all, I would do it, I would not bring a trailer, I would not bring a bus, I would bring a van uh, and a Ford van. And I would bring enough gear that you can do a show without a sound system. Yes. That's, that's a Crucial. main, 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 main thing. Right, because then any room is, is a venue. Yes. But, and you have to have decent, pleasant sound to listen to. 
Just, yeah. It has to be like come across when you do sounds yourself for your band. Like, think about like playing a big empty room that you have 50 people in and they all need to hear everything clearly. It's kind of like stage volume that's balanced. Yes. Yeah. Like, you, what you need is like, you need to be able to make, to do sound for yourself without the drums being in the system. Yes, exactly. So it's like the drums are acoustic and the rest of it, you just, I mean, it's a, I think for a band with a vocalist, that's a hard thing to imagine because they really want, like a lot of time they show up to a venue and they want things to work. Like they think that like a sound guy is supposed to make them sound good. Yeah. Which is like a sound guy. It's no, you want to be a hundred percent self-contained. Yes. Um, if I was a band with a singer, I would also find out, figure out, so I would figure out three hours of music and I would also figure out an acoustic set. Yeah. If I need to. Yeah. Like I would be able to do the entire show acoustically. Um, that's the second thing. So, uh, how old are they? Like 30s. They're in the 30s? Yeah. Yeah, I would start when I was 21. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was asking. I think for a lot of people it's too late. You know, again, it's like you have kids, you have a wife, like just, just like do something. It needs to be baked into the cake already. Because they're not going to like it either way. No, I know. But if you can't, like, you know, if Billy Corgan goes to Europe and comes home with $10 million, it's very different. And she you, still doesn't like it. And she still doesn't <laughs> like it. That's right. And if it's very different they already than have money. you going on two, two, two months of tour, coming back with $500, that's just unacceptable. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're just, at that point, you're just running away from your responsibilities. So you gotta have to, you have to figure out something else. But I'm not talking about that. Like, I, I do understand life gets complicated. It all, I think. Like, we started too, too, in some ways too late. We should have started, we should have moved there immediately. You should have quit school and we should have just started on the road. But we didn't know. Like, yeah. nobody, we, I don't think people understand how nobody did it for over a decade when we started already. Yeah. Like people did it in the jambin scene, but nobody in the fusion scene did it. No. And all the jazz scene. Well, we were really like 25 when we started touring. Yeah, married both of us, or engaged. Engaged, yeah. Uh, so we were 25, but 21 would have been wonderful. Even, yeah. Even 18, you know. Yeah. Um, but that, that age range. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think the, the key thing is to maintain, like, make sure that everybody in the band is in a, I said it, I said it before this, but like in a similar life situation, because, you know, those, those kind of problems, you know, it doesn't matter how you explain them, they will surface. I, I remember, you know, I remember how it felt like, uh, like, obviously, the women we were engaged to at this time, are no longer in our lives. Yeah. So in retrospect, I wish we would never come home. Because I remember, because <laughs> I remember, no, for real, because I remember how it felt. I, when we were on the road, we didn't make a lot of money, but it's like, we're, and well, at the end, we, made, we actually made okay money. But in the beginning, we didn't make a lot of money, but we made money every day. Yeah. So it's like, even if we end up with profit of 50 bucks a person or like, 20 bucks a person. It's like we played a show, we sold CDs, something happened, we got fed for free, right. and we, we made some money on top of it. We were excited about but it. But when we were home, it's like nothing is happening, and we're, losing, we're bleeding money right. when we were home. Yeah. So if you ask me, if you, you should be young and you should be on the road every day, why won't you be on the road every day? Yeah, it's more fun. Yeah. yeah, it's like you need, the more you do when you're younger, it's like you don't understand, but you have time even in 14 to 18, I, I explained it to my cousin, I, to my nephews. Um, it's like, you don't understand, you're not gonna have this, this time in your life again. It's like, don't waste your, like, yeah, it's fun to watch your phone, but that, th but that thing you can do when you're taking a shit when you're 42. Right. But you know, you won't be able to practice your guitar all day long, all day. You won't be able to go have adventures with your friends. Right. You know, you, you, you won't be able to, I don't know, pick up another language, whatever you want to do, it's going to be very tough when you're older. Right. And it's the same thing when you're 20. It's like, you're not going to have the time to right. play that much on the road, no matter what happens. Yeah. So even in, the, in an ideal world, once you have kids, you're not going to do more than three months a year. Nobody does it. It's Bob true. Dylan does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but that's it. Yeah.
It's no, a, it's, it's, it's very true. There are, there are real constraints out there. And it's sure. a lot. In three months on, on, of a year, it's like we did like 75 or something. And it's like, it's a lot. You're still gone a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that it's hard for you. Of course it's hard for you, you know? It's like I miss Alma when, when, when I'm gone. But when I'm playing, I feel like, okay, but I'm doing something good. I'm making money. It's not the same as like, you know, just being gone and... Uh, Sure. Some will. So it's still, I feel like it's worth it, but your wife would, it would be hard for her. It's just, that's just the reality of things. Sure. You know, and it would be hard for your kid, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you're not, it's, even if you are a complete psychopath, you're not going to be able to do that amount of days, like 300 days a year. No, no, you got, you got to really, you, you got to really do it, do it that way. I mean, with, with, with content, you know, me and Nick were talking about it, like, it really seems like right now it's a w really weird situation when you're looking at, like, music channels of people who really have made it, where there's a whole type of extremely successful YouTubers that seem to be completely grandfathered in to their position. Because yes. they're not doing... And like the, their shit is wildly successful, but it's not very engaging, and they're not following the formula of successful content, you know. But again, like I said in the beginning, fame in itself is creating enough inertia to where they can just cruise, yeah. you know. Yeah, and of course. Like if you see it in our memes. We we rip, we take some but yeah, meme. Brett. Brett sends me uh, like Brett Stein. He sends me memes that he posts on his thing, like three likes, two comments, and I send it back to him, like you know, yeah, like, twenty thousand yeah. likes, nine hundred yeah. shares, you know, hundreds Look of comments. Look at the meme that I, I I stole that stupid meme that I've seen for years, and we have fi fifty five thousand likes on it. Yeah. And it's like, and I've I've seen this meme so many times. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, but you know, hey, we get paid for it, so it's it's just nuts. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, we should do it. Yeah, but but that's your point with uh, with you know with people that once you get to a certain size, you can just teach the same thing everybody else teaches. But I think I think that's that is the truth about um, about getting to that place. It's sort of like eh, there are probably many paths there, but it is constant work for a long period of your life. Yeah. Right, it's like you gotta just keep, like I don't know. For the last year, we've been putting out a video a day on YouTube. More, M yeah, more, yeah. and uh, and it's just you know, it's some like whatever you do, you just gotta do so intensely for such a long time before you can expect anything in return. Right, you just gotta be very serious about it. Show up and work when you don't feel like it. Well, I yeah. really believe in incremental growth, so. To me, if you play three shows a year and you really try to make them the best and invite everybody, yes, it might be, good. It might be a huge success, but everything is banking on those three yeah. and you have nothing after that. But if you'll be able to, if you're playing like 200 or 300 shows a year, then you did a lot. So yeah. you, know you, you know you're advancing. And it happened to us. We advanced from a place to... Um, from a place that we just play dive bars and coffee shops and stuff like that and you know a lot of free shows just for food and we took everything we could to fill out our schedule to a point where we made money and yeah. we just sold tickets yeah and we just did it by doing that yeah like nothing nothing changed it wasn't like youtube that made us do it no like we were already uh sorry our facebook, facebook yeah. it wasn't our facebook yeah facebook helped yeah but it wasn't facebook that yeah, made us happen. it was just, just us doing yeah doing it enough yeah all right. Well, this is a good place to stop. We have a lot of other things to do today. Yeah, uh, stuff to talk about too. Join our Patreon. That's the main thing. Subscribe to the YouTube. We're on Facebook, all that stuff, and we'll see you next time.